welcome to my channel on the best of fantasy. Today I am reviewing Song of Susanna, book six of the Dark Tower series by Stephen King. This review will be spoiler free. Now I want to come out right away and just say this Song of Susanna, book six, is my favorite book of the Dark Tower series thus far. I know that might seem a little controversial to say since it is probably safe to say not the most popular of the Dark Tower books. And I have been told by many people that uh, <laughs> they lo either loved the last couple books of Dark Tower or they absolutely loathed the last books of the Dark Tower and I'm pretty sure I know where I fall now because I was absolutely, completely engaged while reading Song of Susanna. Engaged in the sense of reading a gripping, fast-paced story, but also engaged up here in so many interesting and cool ways. And I want to share that with you guys. It is just absolutely a mind-blowing book for me, and it seems like a, the culmination of a lot of things that Stephen King has been doing in the series. So it doesn't come out of nowhere by any means whatsoever. And I should say that, you know, I loved every other book in this series. I absolutely loved every book. Wizarding Glass was my favorite previously. Still love it. Uh, I would say that Wolves of the Kala, for me, did drag a wee bit because there was that build up, build up, build up, build up, build up until you get the action finally near the end. Uh, and that, of course, you know, that's, partly because it is very much a, 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 an homage <laughs> to the Seven Samurai slash uh, the Magnificent Seven. Uh, but, you know, it was still a great book. I enjoyed it. But, I, you know, I think that Song of Susanna benefits from being a book that is, uh, although it's relatively short, certainly compared to the last book and even to Wolves of the Kala, it is a book that has three threads in it. And it was kind of cool to be able to switch between those threads, although they are very much connected. Like everything in the Dark Tower universe, everything seems to be connected, but these three threads are most definitely connected. And I think that variation also helped this book, just in terms of the pacing and so forth. But I love where Stephen King goes in this book. And let's start with the meta elements, the meta elements, which are weird but very effective. And, and Stephen King, as I said, he was hinting at this stuff earlier, particularly at the end of Wolves of the Kala. So it's, and I also think it's not just a gimmick here, this meta stuff that he's doing here. Uh, I would say that just as in previous books, he has recklessly and gloriously blended genres, such as fantasy and science fiction and horror and whatnot. In this book, he has also written a book that uh, blends the fictional and the real, uh, the mythical and the personal. And this is, in, in that sense, it is an examination. Song of Susanna is an examination of what it means to write and tell a story in the midst of the story. So in the midst of the story, he is examining what it means to write and tell a story. Uh, but instead of, you could imagine this perhaps detracting from the tale, in fact, it becomes part of the tale, which sucks it in. It's not like the way everything gets sucked into the Dark Tower. Everything in the multiverse. There's a, 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 a gravitational force, I think. I'm getting the sense that a lot of Stephen King's other stuff has been sucked into this, this Dark Tower story, this multiverse of his, uh, in a way that uh, probably he couldn't really help, that he felt the pull of it himself. Uh, and I haven't read anything outside of Dark Tower yet, so, uh, but I get that sense just from reading these books. Uh, in a way, this is very much like life and art feeding each other, these meta elements, this uh, blending of the fictional and real. And it, it leads to a kind of transcendence of the story. In a way, the story in Song of Susanna, it bleeds into life. It bleeds into the reader's life in a way that I find incredibly effective and moving and just absolutely transcending. I mean, just, just, this was great stuff. Okay. <laughs> I loved it. I also love how referential it is. Just like the previous books in the Dark Tower series, 
uh, which allude to everything from Lord of the Rings to uh, Romeo and Juliet to The Wasteland by T.S. Eliot and The Wizard of Oz and Shardick and all kinds of stuff. Uh, you get the idea, right? Well, this book also alludes to all kinds of things. And I would say that this, and I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna tell you what they are because that could be, I guess, a spoiler. You'll find out for yourself. Uh, but there are some great allusions in here. They, they continue unabashedly in Song of Susanna. Uh, this, this freedom, this reveling in illusion that I have not seen too many other places. I guess T.S. Eliot's The Wasteland, the, the poem, it might be an example of this level of illusion. But it's, it's fairly rare in storytelling for the illusions to be the, this prominent. And to affect the story, that's the interesting thing. These illusions aren't just, again, for the sake of being cool, for the sake of making these references, they become part of the story in the most imaginative way. They are very much alive. So, and you know, in that sense, the Dark Tower series you can see is just so acquisitive, right? It has this life of its own that seems to just drag other things into it. That's that gravitational force I was talking about before. Uh, and I get the sense that uh, Stephen King certainly f feels that it's a story that he was more or less channeling, not a story that he was writing. And he certainly encourages that notion, I think, in this book. So very cool stuff. It's just very powerful, and I found very moving as well. And in terms of the themes that are in here, I mean, it's rich. This is a rich book. This is a guy who understands people, what makes us tick, and the themes that, uh, that are so important to our experience, to the experience of being alive. So there's motherhood in here in a big way. There's injustice and there's exploitation. There is race and also the connection between people. And all of this is most wrapped up in one of these threads, just absolutely powerful to me, where you have two women, and I'm not gonna get too specific here, but you have two women who are very much uh, find themselves very much connected to one another. And all of those themes I just mentioned, you know, become wrapped up in this. Uh, it is just absolutely powerful stuff. And it, there is a relationship of exploitation there. And, and also at the same time, giving the sense of comple complexity, not only of the individual characters, but the relationship between these characters. So you have this relationship of exploitation and, and uh, outright just hatred mixed with pity and sympathy and empathy and a sense of, of uh, bonding at the same time. It's just very rich, very complex what's explored in here. So very powerful, also very horrible at times and beautiful and terrifying and grotesque, uh, all of those things. I mean, it is just a disturbing book at times, but it is also just so true to the human experience. And as I said, absolutely beautiful and transcending. There's also a sense of the mystery pervading life in this book. That uh, it, It's been in all of the Dark Tower books so far, but I think it's been most powerful so far in Song of Susanna. There is one more book to go, and you know, if I like this, hopefully I'm going to love the last book, book seven, Dark Tower. But yeah, this, this book is uh, definitely an examination of what makes life worth living, and also what is worth dying for. Uh, it demands the stretching of your imagination and absolutely rewards it at the same time. It's one of those reads where when you, you get to the end of it and you read those final words and you just close the, the book and you're just kind of sitting there feeling absolutely awestruck and you see the world a little bit differently. Perhaps it's a bit brighter, uh, more real, and at the same time, less real. <laughs> it's one of those books. And the characters too. I absolutely love the characters in this book. I feel so attached to the Cotet, to Roland, and the, all the others in the Cotet, including Oi. Uh, they, they feel very real to me as well. They feel like people. Uh, I relate to them. They're very human. Uh, but they are also are very much vessels that, are, uh, that, co that contain our struggles that we can see playing out before us as we are immersed in this story. Uh, and yeah, we see all of our struggles there, also the joy, the beauty, and the pain. And it is just, for me, this has been such an incredible ride, this Dark Tower series. I cannot wait to read The Dark Tower because I'm pretty sure, as I said, uh, now that I know which side I seem to be falling on here, 
I'm absolutely ecstatic uh, about Song of Susanna. And let's see if The Dark Tower, the last book in the series, can top it for me. That's it for me for now. Until next time.